Welcome to the Frame Builder MRD Roof Generation Module Tutorial. In this session, we'll guide you through the es essentials of planning and generating a complex light steel frame roof. Here's what we'll cover. 1. Drawing the initial face or plotting the roof's footprint. 2. Creating guidelines and shaping the roof with hips and valleys. 3. Placing trusses under these guidelines and generating truss shapes automatically. 4. Using quick menu options for everything from generating hip roof guides to managing truss slices and even generating walls directly from roof guides. And don't worry, it's not as complicated as it might sound. Think of it like putting together a Lego set, but with fewer blocks to step on. Ready to dive in? Let's get started. Next up, let's introduce the quick menu. Accessing the quick menu. The quick menu is your go-to for most of the tasks in the roof generation process. You can enable it through the main toolbar settings as shown in the image above. Simply click the gear icon and ensure that the display quick dialog option is set to true. Using the quick menu. Once enabled, the quick menu appears on the right side of your screen. It provides streamlined access to key actions for generating your roof, including generating roof guides, quickly create hip roof guides or generate trusses directly from your drawn face, adding trusses, place a single truss slice or convert the slices into full trusses with ease, truss slice options, enable or disable slice truncation and toggle the visibility of roof guides and shapes. This menu will be your best friend as we move through each step, helping you stay organized and focused. Ready to see it in action? Let's continue. And our step two, generating roof guides. Now that you've drawn your roof footprint, it's time to generate the roof guides. Follow these steps. One, select the roof face. Click on the face you drew earlier. This will be the base for the roof guides. Two, click step 1A in the quick menu. In the quick menu, click on step 1A generate hip roof guides from face. This will automatically create the initial roof guides based on the shape and size of your selected face. Important note, the configuration of these roof guides is influenced by your default roof settings. Before generating the guides, you can adjust these settings for optimal results. Adjusting default settings. Click on the cog icon under the roof module toolbar found on the far right. Here, you can set parameters like roof pitch and truss heel height. In the advanced default settings, you'll find additional options like automatically generating roof guides into trusses, enabling automatic truncations for certain areas of the trusses. These settings help customize the design of your roof to meet specific needs or preferences. Now let's move forward and see those guides in action. Step 3. Hiding Roof Shape or Roof Guides When working with trusses or truss slices, it can be challenging to snap to points on the face if the roof guides or roof shape edges get in the way. Luckily, the Quick Menu offers options to make this process smoother. How to Hide the Roof Shape or Roof Guides 1. Hiding the Roof Shape In the Quick Menu, select Hide Show Roof Guide Shape. This will toggle the visibility of the roof shape face, making it easier to see the structure beneath and accurately place your truss slice. Two, hiding the roof guidelines. Similarly, click on hide show roof guidelines in the quick menu. This option will hide the guideline edges, reducing visual clutter and helping you focus on placing trusses without interference. Why use these options? These visibility toggles are especially useful when placing truss slices. They give you a clearer view, helping you align and position trusses precisely without the distraction of overlapping lines. Focusing on key elements. You can better manage the design process by focusing on specific elements without the guides in the way. Now you can toggle these options on or off as needed, making the placement of trusses and slices a breeze. Ready to place that first truss slice? Let's keep going. Haber Step 4 adding a single slice or truss, step 2A. Now that you have your roof guides, it's time to add a single truss or truss slice using step 2A. Here's how it works. One, select start and end points. Click on the edge of the face where you want the truss to start. 
move your mouse to the opposite end of the desired truss direction and click again to set the endpoint. 2. Using guidelines. If you have construction guidelines that run across and extend over the face, you don't need to click precisely on the edge of the face. The tool will automatically determine the start and end positions if your clicks are within the roof work area, even if the points are slightly outside the face. 3. Previewing the truss. While positioning the truss slice, you'll see a preview of the truss shape, as shown in yellow lines in the attached image. This preview helps you visualize how the truss will fit within the roof shape. 4. Troubleshooting with color indicators. If there is an issue with the truss position, such as potential protrusions or conflicts due to the various roof slopes, you will see color indicators. Red or orange colors indicate problems with the truss positioning or shape. These visual aids make it easier to adjust the truss position before finalizing it, ensuring a perfect fit. Give it a try and see how the truss aligns with your roof guides. Ready for the next step? Our step five, using keyboard shortcuts for enhanced control. When working with the roof guides and placing trusses, there are a few handy keyboard shortcuts that can make the process smoother. One, N key, toggle roof guide visibility. Press the N key to quickly hide or show the roof guide faces. This is especially useful when you need to switch between viewing the guides and focusing on placing trusses without visual clutter. Two, V, key generate truss spacing guides. Use the V key to create construction points on the left and right sides of your truss placement. A pop-up will appear, allowing you to set the spacing of the guides relative to the initial point you selected. This makes it easier to position multiple trusses with consistent spacing. 3. J key. Adjust truss positioning. Press the J key to toggle the positioning of the truss between left, right, and center. This allows for precise alignment when placing a truss slice letting you choose whether it aligns to the left side, right side, or is centered on your selected points. These shortcuts give you more control and speed up the workflow, making it easier to manage the visibility and positioning of your guides and trusses. Give them a try as you continue with your roof design and see how they improve your efficiency. Ready to move on to the next step? Step 6. Generating truss slices into light steel frame trusses, step 2B. Now that we've placed truss slices, let's convert them into fully defined light steel frame trusses. This step will give the trusses their structural components based on the specifications you've set. Here's how to do it. 1. Select the truss slices. Click to select the truss slices you want to convert into trusses. If you want to convert multiple slices at once, hold down the Shift key while selecting. If you do not select any slices before proceeding, the module will prompt you to generate all the slices in the model into trusses. Two, click step 2B in the quick menu. Go to the quick menu and click on step 2B, generate slice into truss. This will begin the conversion process. Three, default roof settings apply. The generation process relies on the properties set under your default roof settings. This includes section selected, the light steel section type that defines the truss, roof pitch, the angle of the roof, truss heel height, the height at which the truss meets the wall, web spacing, the spacing between the internal web members of the truss, and other parameters specific to your design needs. By following these steps, your selected slices will transform into fully defined trusses complete with the light steel framing elements needed for structural integrity. Make sure to review your default settings before generating the trusses to ensure they align with your design goals. Step 7. Advanced options for generating truss slices. Before diving into the advanced options, make sure you start with a fresh face. This step requires a new face that hasn't been converted into roof shapes or guides yet. If you try using a face that already has roof guides or shapes, the process might not work as intended. 
Automatic Slice Generation. When you click Step 1A in the Quick menu, a Properties window will appear, similar to the image above. This menu includes a setting for Generate Slices into Truss. If set to True, the module will automatically convert each generated slice directly into a truss. If you leave it as false, it will only generate the slices without converting them into trusses, allowing you to customize and refine them further before the conversion. Spacing. Based on default roof properties, the slices generated will follow the spacing rules you set under your default roof properties, ensuring uniformity throughout the structure. This feature makes it easy to generate all the slices at once, especially useful for larger or more complex roof designs. Offsetting the first and last truss. The first slice and last slice properties allow you to specify an offset distance for the first and last truss in the sequence. Um, this is particularly handy if you want to adjust the positioning of the trusses relative to the edges of your roof, ensuring a better fit with the structure. By starting with a new face and following these steps, you can generate the roof shape, guides, and truss slices all in one go, saving time while maintaining precision in your design. Step 8. Using Automatic Truncation The Automatic Truncation feature is designed to simplify the integration of light steel framing with your trusses, providing support for elements like purlins along sloped surfaces. This feature creates cutouts in key areas of the truss, similar to a ladder frame, allowing the steel framing to fit seamlessly. How Automatic Truncation Works Truncation Areas The Automatic Truncation option will trim specific sections of the truss to accommodate the thickness of the supporting light steel frame. Truncation Thickness The thickness or depth of the vertical truncation is determined by the default section selected in your roof default settings. This ensures that the cutouts match the dimensions of the framing components. Truncation Adjustment. You can adjust these truncations before and after generating the trusses. This gives you flexibility to refine the fit and alignment of the trusses as needed. Adjusting Truncation Settings. Truncation Clearance Property. Under the Advanced Settings in your Roof Default Settings, you'll find the Truncation Clearance Property. Adjusting this property allows you to fine-tune the size of the truncations to ensure they match your structural needs. Quick Menu Adjustment Commands The Quick Menu also includes commands for further adjustments, enabling you to Horizontally truncate sections of a truss to make space for specific framing elements. Vertically truncate sections to, to better fit the slope and layout of your roof. This feature makes it easier to adapt your truss design to the requirements of light steel framing, providing the flexibility to adjust as needed while maintaining structural integrity. With automatic truncation, you'll have a more precise fit for supporting elements like purlins and other framing components. Wrapping up. Congratulations on mastering the essentials of the FrameBuilder MRD roof generation module. We've covered everything from drawing your roof footprint and generating guides to placing trusses and utilizing advanced features like automatic truncation. With these tools, you're now well equipped to design complex light steel frame roofs with precision and efficiency. Happy building.